haven. An expert, an authority, a connoisseur, a specialist, a professional, a knowledge king, a rock and roll sports talker. Coons Ford of Security Boulevard is proud to present The Sports Maven with Bruce Posner, a no-holds-barred look at the sports world. Now, here's Bruce Posner, The Sports Maven. Good man, we got a full house today here in uh, Coons Ford presents The Sports Maven. We got the we got the Viner family who are just dripping with nerves tonight over the Caps game and a little bit of nerves over the over the Maryland Hopkins game. But we're going to start off with Maryland and Hopkins, a repeat of last Saturday. I've said this before, Wayne, and I don't know if you remember. I once asked both Tillman and uh, Petromala, is if Maryland, you know, if. The last game of the year is Maryland Hopkins, which was one of the great lacrosse games that I've seen last week. Regardless of the fact that Maryland won, had Hopkins won, it was just a great, great game. But if they play again the following week in the Big Ten title, two weeks in a row, are we getting a little absurd about it? Because I'm going to tell you what Quinn Kesson said to me. He had a great idea. What do you think? In other words, it almost seems ridiculous to play them again. It does, but that's how the schedule breaks. A little bit like the NFL, where you could end up playing the same team almost two weeks in a row or two out of three weeks. I'm sure that they're happy it cuts down the prep time. You just played them. It was a great game. I think that Hopkins' defensive strategy worked for Hopkins. Hey, what's Beninati doing? Uh, He is at the Big Ten tournament. So he's not doing the Caps. Caps game is on the NBC on the national feed. So he wouldn't do it anyway. Right. Okay. So he was at, and I saw him do the second game, the Hopkins-Ohio State game. Fantastic finish to that. We're going to talk about the scuffle, the fight there. Uh, That was a good game. Yeah. But Maryland, look, you play who you got to play. I don't think that Hopkins can deploy the same defensive strategy. I think Maryland will have some counterattack to that. But last week... What a great atmosphere. Mason, what do you think of that atmosphere that they had out at Hopkins? It's just such a better one than, in my opinion, Maryland. It's meant for lacrosse. The fans are right on top of it. And Hopkins is just such a storied program. So many, and everything there is about lacrosse. Their end zone building, unlike Maryland, for lacrosse. The championship banners around the field, for lacrosse. It's just such a great place to watch a game. Well, it's like kind of like the home of home of lacrosse, Homewood. Uh, no, I will say this. The atmosphere was unbelievable there, but I'm not so sure it was any better than last year with 17,000 people in Maryland. I thought that that was miraculous last year. But it's the venue. It's not being in an enclosed venue. I, You know, for me, if Maryland had a, along with soccer, I always say it would be a combine. Mm-hmm. If they had a venue of 10,000 people, that's all they would need. All right, and if you play Hopkins and the crowd looks like this could be much more, move it to Bird. It's not the end, or Maryland, Maryland State, Stadium. Excuse me, it's not the end of the world. But I want to talk about the elephant in the room. All right. Oh, it, I, I'm going to. It's gonna... not Ethan. All right. <laughs> the elephant in the room is. You, I said it two weeks ago. I asked Coach Tillman. I asked Connor Kelly. You were there when I asked them. When he banged his knee in that game against Ohio State, Ohio State, from that from the end of that game on till now, he does not seem like the same guy. All right, and that tells. And then he had his knee wrapped last week. All right, so if there is a knee problem, and they, you know, Tillman emphatically said it was nothing, but that doesn't mean anything. He's never going to tell me if it's something because I'm on the air. All right. And I don't blame him for that. Petra Mile would do the same thing. But the mere fact that if Maryland loses this game night, if it wasn't Hopkins, he would not play, I don't think. But it is Hopkins. And every time you play Hopkins, it's all, it's... It's for everything. It's for everything, all right? Everything, every time, all the time, and that's what makes it great. Right. So even if there's a so handful of people you, up there... Would you sit him out thinking about the big picture? We know what the big picture is. If it was me, all right, and Lord knows, I don't know, you can't mention my name in the same breath as Coach Tillman. Would you sit him out this week 
and next week. Well, I know you're going to say yes. I'm going to say no. He is the captain and the glue of this team, and I don't want to change the chemistry. He might not score as much. He might not be as quick at the moment. But just tell him to go out and play. Just don't exert yourself because there really isn't a backup for him right now. Maybe it'd be Bernhardt would move into that position, but Rotance. I don't think he's ready. Rotance would move there in a, in a heartbeat. Mason, what do you got on that? But still, even if they put Rotance there, he's not close to Connor Kelly. Right now, you're seeing it at its height that they don't really have a second guy, a second line. It's Bernhardt, Kelly, and Rotance. And whether it's going to be Will Snyder moving on, Bubba, somebody else, they don't have it right now. I totally, totally disagree. If they didn't have it, they went to win the last two games. Uh, by the overplay on on Connor Kelly, Logan Wisnowskis has been incredible the past couple of games. And you know, when you get five points in a conference uh, semifinal, and then you actually you play, I think he had a hat trick against Hopkins. All right, it's because of the overplay. But Jared Bernhardt came to life last game. All right, I think he had four goals and assists, or three and two. He came to life, and uh, this team rises and falls somewhat on Connor Kelly, but the it's the other ingredients there. And look, most of the cross world would say that, and they would have said that about Rambo and Hecock. Okay, but who won the national championship for Maryland last year? Was it Rambo and Hecock? No, it was Connor Kelly. All right. It was Connor Kelly, and it was uh, Adam DeMillo, and it was uh, uh, hey, Dylan Maltz. Dylan Maltz. And so Newf the, with those ground balls. So we had a ground ball vacuum going. A lot of things are you going don't, right. You don't win, let alone a game, with one player. The impact that Connor Kelly has, even though they sent two or three guys, and all the pictures we put up in the post game, so Connor Kelly with the ball, he had three guys at him. So if they did secondary assists, I think he would have had a couple secondary assists. He wasn't the primary because three people run at Connor Kelly and he dumps the ball off to the side and they rotate it down and Tim Rotan scores. How come your Terp Talk shirt has white Terp and mine has a red Terp on a red shirt? Because this is the second order of the shirts. Second edition? Second edition. All right. I just had to get that clear. But my flag still isn't right. Your I got a red on red. Right. So. All right. Okay. All right. All right. But, but we still That's love. That's when you buy Arthur. wholesale. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, Connor Kelly, to me, is the best player in lacrosse. Uh, he's proven it. But, you know, I look at Maryland, and as the year goes by, you have the best coaches in lacrosse and certainly give kudos to Coach Petromala for playing Connor Kelly and Jared Bernhardt seven on two and uh, almost defeating Maryland. And again, they probably should have defeated Maryland. So what's going to happen today, uh, Wayne? I'll ask the expert on lacrosse, Mason. What is Maryland going to do? Assume that Connor Kelly plays and he's healthy, which I'm still not sure, but we'll assume that fact. What is Maryland going to do to combat what – uh, Coach Petromala did last week. And will Maryland get to 10 goals today? Well, I'm going to start off with the first thing you said, if they'll get 10 goals. And I think, no, nah, not today. I just Hopkins' defense was really prepared, and they can continue to execute their same strategies. But if you look at the end of the game and the chances that the Terps had, if they can create those while Hopkins still tries to play 7-on-2, I think they could have a potential to explode. But... You know, Coach Petromali is a defensive genius. They're going to be ready, and they're going to have something new for Maryland because they know that the chances that were generated at the end of the game, they can't live the whole game with. I think you're going to tell me that if they move Connor Kelly to the X, it makes it a lot harder to double him up. And if they want to play that many guys near the goal line, it's going to give a lot of open shots to your Will Snyders uh, and whoever else is going to come in and play that role. It's Adam DeMillo or Anthony DeMaio or... Uh, Colin Giblin, but somebody else is going to be left wide open for Maryland. Okay, this is what they're going to do today, in my opinion. And yes, they will score 10 goals. All right, they will score 10 goals because I think the offense couldn't have been any worse last week, and they still scored seven in regulation. They will spread it out as wide as they ever had, have. All right, and they're going to look for cutters, but they're going to spread it out and they're going to try and 
open up Jared Bernhardt, and he might move from the X, and they might put Bubba there. And he might be the guy who rotates in and out, uh, you know, around the crease or whatever. And I think they've developed a great feeder in, not developed, it's happened, that Logan Wisniewskis has turned into a feeder that we never thought would happen. I mean, when we first watched him the year, all, all three of us said, hey, look, he's a shooter from the wings, a great shooter. And all of a sudden, who had a winning pass against Johns Hopkins? Well, you you saw it live, Tom. You saw him develop into a passer. And you said during the game, look at the passes he's making. Yeah. Because as he gets closer to the goal, he's drawing two or three people. And his ability to catch and then get rid of that ball is opening up the offense in close. We talk about, Quinn, uh, Mason was asking about Quinn Kessinich, and he told a story uh, to me last week that by three-quarters of the way into the year last year at Syracuse, the players on the team were pleading with Desco for Logan to burn Logan's red shirt, and Desco wouldn't do it. My guess is is that Logan made it clear that he was leaving, and he didn't want to talk about it. But he they want he was dominating practice at Syracuse, all right. And I know that when Desco watches him, he must be sick. All right. Now how they handled it, whether or not he was homesick with lacrosse, you never know. Because transferring is just part of the game. See count of count of zero. All right? Just part of the game. But uh, the other point that Quint made to me last week that I thought that was great. Ra- you know, the regular season champion of the Big Ten is the regular season champion. And that should be the team that gets the automatic bid, just like the ACC and everything else. And that final week, instead of having a tournament, why not have an ACC-Big Ten matchup? All right, to even further uh, help on the seedings. Don't play somebody you've played before. Like Maryland wouldn't play Notre Dame or they wouldn't play whoever, North Carolina. You play uh, Syracuse or Virginia or, or Duke. And the same thing with Hopkins. To me, that's a great idea because I think this is like ridiculous. And if they don't play the game right now in Maryland or Johns Hopkins, you're just not getting the crowd for it. I don't think the interest is there. No, I think everybody who lost is going to go home. It's a long way from here, as you found out, to go out there for one game. You know, you thought about heading out there today, but it, it You know what happened? I, found, I researched it last night, and I came about this close to actually calling you up and telling you I was going. Uh, I could have drove to Philadelphia, flew round trip for 125 hours. That didn't make sense, but it was there. I saw it American Airlines. However, tomorrow's my grandson's birthday. And his party's at 11 o'clock. Could debate it. I can't do that. No. Nope. Things take precedence. I mean, if it was a national championship, I'd miss his birthday. But it's not. <laughs> All right? It's not. I'm with you on I'm, that one. You know, it's not. Uh, and, you know, and also the thing that bothers me about this game, and I know it means a lot to Hopkins in Maryland to win this game and whatever, especially probably to Hopkins because now they've lost four in a row. All right. And sooner or later, Hopkins is going to beat Maryland. Of course. That's no upset tonight if Hopkins beats Maryland. You know, it's not an upset. It's, and it's no guaranteed win for Maryland. It's, it's going to be a brutal game, which bothers me a little bit. Okay. Because you're really going to get worn out on a game that doesn't mean that That's much. That's exactly right. If Maryland you know, loses this game. You asked one of the most interesting questions that I've heard somebody ask in a post game, And we, we didn't put it up because we had a lot of other material. Uh, but you on the field after the game, you were talking to John Tillman, and you asked him, how do you recover from winning this game? And I said, did you just ask him, how do you recover from a win? And, and you explained it there, but give me 30 seconds on what did that mean? It meant to me that that game was so emotional last week, and it, it took on a meaning of its own. All right? When we remember this season, we're going to remember the championship game but more than the championship game, unless you know Maryland or Hopkins would win, but more than the championship game, we're going to remember that game. I'm telling you, I've been there before. Mm-hmm. That is the game that's going to stick in your mind. Let's be real. If it turns out to be Denver against Notre Dame for the championship, uh, you, you're going to barely watch it, and you know, you're going to pin your hat on the Maryland-Hopkins game at Hopkins, no matter what happens tonight. And I'll tell you what else. 
mainly because you win at Homewood, just the way Hopkins feels when they win at College Park. But uh, that's what I meant by that. How do you get emotionally high? Now, here's the thing about tonight's game, guys. If Maryland loses today, who's number one RPI? Maryland. 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 That's not even a question. I saw the ranking of RPI. It's not even close. And if Hopkins wins, they'll move from seven to five or something like that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to move into the top four. All right? Uh, So my point is is that it means a lot because it's Maryland Hopkins. But if Hopkins would win, I'm not going to pound my hand. I'm not going to be upset or probably for a little bit. You know, and then I'll turn the channel and watch the end of the Caps game. And then you get really upset. Right. Now you get upset. <laughs> you get upset. It just rips my heart out because I'm back to believing. They're going to win the night. All right. The Caps but, are going to win. So, before we move on to hockey. I'm not moving on. So, so prediction. Mason. Well, I have one and more you question. Both if they got Hopkins last week. Yep. BP predicted Maryland. I was lucky. <laughs> lucky. I was lucky. Go ahead. If they get blown out tonight, would you be upset? Yeah, I'd be blown. If they got blown out, blown out, yes. It ain't going to happen. It's, no, I don't think either. No, that, you know why it's not going to happen? It's not, never going to happen with Danny Mars. It's just not going to happen. All right. Well, well Bruce, I have to redeem myself, so I'm picking the Terps. Yeah. To me, I agree. But Wayne, any contrary of you? Eh. I, Hopkins is going to win one of these games sooner or later. I can't go th- agree with everybody, so I'm going to pick well, Hop if, tonight. If they're going to win one sooner or later rather than win tonight. tonight. Yep. Yeah. And you think both Maryland Maryland Hopkins are going to be separating the brackets both headed towards Annapolis? If they don't separate Maryland and Hopkins in the bracket, it's beyond stupidity. If We want Maryland to play again in a week? You know? Well, if you said Hopkins wins, they go from around 7-5, to five, that puts them even out of Annapolis. It could happen. So if Hopkins jump happens, you don't get you know the great atmosphere that you'd have in Annapolis with both Hopkins and Maryland. Oh, they, there. they gotta put them there. Who who do they have or who? No, do you, I think they put them there somehow. Who do you think's gonna end up in Hempstead? Who do you have other well, you're than gonna Maryland? Have Hopkins? Yale, you're gonna have. Uh, well, right now it's Albany, Penn, Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Yale, Cornell, Loyola. Boy, Loyola's been getting hot. Look out for Loyola. You know their defense is something else. And uh, I don't know. But I do. I think the Terps are going to win today. But no, I would not be shocked. I just don't think that Hopkins can shut them down again. I'll be honest with you. I think Maryland can shut them down again. But real quick, I've got to take another minute and steal to the next section. This fight that Hopkins got into, and I got news for you, it was really caused by Ohio State. They took a cheap shot at the goalie, pounded him to the ground, and there's an uh, unwritten rule of lacrosse. You protect your goalie at all costs. I, it's the same way in ice hockey. Absolutely. Ma- Mason saw this. What, what I did watched you... it last night. What? And you're right. It was 55, Joel Tinney, who popped in with the swing. And he, he was the leading puncher guy. I never saw the two guys who got ejected. But I didn't have any stop slow motion on it or anything. Mm-hmm. But it was nasty. Mason? I mean, have you ever gotten to a fight like that in a game? No. <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't get fortunate enough with playing enough to, <laughs> to get in a fight like that. But hey, when somebody hits your goalie, it's up to the, your teammates to protect you. And yeah. that you saw the unwritten rule, as you said, in lacrosse, fully executed. And Tinney, known for being a guy that's a little rough, and it just happens. You know, somebody says something to you after they hit your goalie, you almost got the right to swing. Yeah, it was a mess, but uh, it reminds me of what the Penguins might do to Tom Wilson next year. But we'll talk about that after the break. After the break. This is Bruce Posner. It's a teaser. Uh, Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300 as we do Coons Ford presents The Sports Maven. Welcome back to Sports Maven, presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, once again, here's Bruce Posner, Sports Maven. Welcome back to segment two. And before we get rolling on the Orioles, which won't be a long segment, all right? Uh, Wayne, big day for you and Mason. You're going over to Coons Ford afterwards. I might join you. And you're going to film and test ride the Mustang, correct? Yeah, we're extending our partnership with Coons Ford, and we're going to start reviewing the vehicles over there. Dennis is excited. 
Mason's really excited. Ethan's got his GoPro kit, so we have all the outside the car angle, inside the car angle. Oh, wow. And Impressive. Impressive, dude. Right. Well, Ethan was uh, my video guy for the lacrosse team the okay. past couple of years, so we've right. worked together on video shoots. Uh, Mason, what attracts you to the Ford Mustang? I know Dennis has quite a few of them out there. Well, to me, it's one of the best cars for the money. You get the V8 engine for as low as $35,000. Has a 5.0 liter engine, over 300 horsepower, just really great car for the money. You know, you know what we say in the car business about the Mustangs? Go. They have eyes, all right? In other words, a Mustang comes up and it's red or it's black or it's white, it, it attracts the eyes. Great how, looking car. How long were you in the car business? Uh, from the time I was 16 to the time... Uh, I was about 44, something mm. like that, about 28 years, maybe 41, I was in the car business. And uh, when I was 16 years old, we I used to work down at our motorcycle place and selling motorcycles and used cars, and I used to sell about 25 a month, and I was 16. So it grew over the years, and then when we became a, a large franchise, mm. uh, you know, the most fun, though, was when it was back in those days, selling motorcycles. And then we were selling Hondas. And Honda motorcycle was like it. That was like... Absolutely. It was like the bike. Uh, it still has and a And they came problem. by and they said, look, we've got these new cars now. They get like 50 miles a gallon. I said, you guys want to handle it? And we said, oh, do we have to take that car? You know? And look at what happened to the Honda franchise since It's a since long then. story that we yeah. didn't get more deeply involved. But Honda cars were like a dead franchise for like eight, nine years. Yeah. Because nobody cared about gas mileage. And they were gas really small cars. 69 cents a gallon. They're very small. So when you said 40-something years in the car business, that's about the same number of cars you bought from Dennis, isn't it? Without question. He's the best guy in the world, a really close friend. And uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're putting your video uh, to work for Dennis. That's great. I know he'll love it. And uh, he's got a lot of great cars there. And uh, one thing I'll guarantee you, it'll be busy when you're there. And I said, do you want me to come in on Saturday? It's going to be really busy. Oh, he, he said, it's really tumult. busy every day. Right. But Don't he, worry about that. He likes the tumble. You know, he likes the action there. So. Oh, yeah. It's a great place. To, well, I'm sure you'll find your way over there. Well, let's, let's put it this way. All right? Yes, I will. But let's put it this way. Uh, we go from a winner in Coons Ford Security Boulevard. Jam, I mean, uh, my producer here is laughing. Timmy. Yeah. To a team that's eight and twenty-four, that's almost becoming it. It's almost looking like it's misery when this team plays. That's funny. I got a flash. Chris Davis hit a three-run home run last night. I said, "Man, finally he's out of it. Finally." Except, guess what? It was Oakland's Chris Davis. Uh, All right. <laughs> it's just. I mean, you take a look at an infield that you thought was going to have some real star power. You got Danny Valencia. The Orioles got rid of. Tim, how many times? Two, three times he's been in Orioles. This lineup is so dead that it's... They, they've got J.C., uh, what's his name, uh, from the Yankees playing second base now. They didn't have any depth. And Bruce, how, and, and Tim, how do you forever have no depth in a farm system? I, I can't answer that, but I think the worst thing that we did this year was just, with the exception of Alex Cobb, who looks like he's rounding into shape, uh... That was it. We almost went backwards with the team. I mean, Trumbo's back. It gives a little juice to the lineup. But they just continue to lose. This is 8-24. All right? The, laughingly, to go 90-72, and 72, they'd have to go uh, 66. No, they'd have to go 72 and 38, which well, is impossible. Not going to happen. No. But it's not, it's not the what now. It's the why to me. Every year you hear that the, there's no depth, there's there's nothing, and when you need a player, you, you don't want Danny Valencia playing third base on a part-time, full-time basis. Uh, Pedro Alvarez used to do that a long time ago. He's not a third baseman. You got Mark Trumbo in the outfield now, trying to make sure you have enough bats. Uh, it just the fact that there is no depth of this organization is going to doom them. And sure, you could trade Manny. And if you got three great players for him, it's not enough to rebuild the depth you're of this not, you're organization. You're going to be lucky to get one. All right, the way Manny's value is every day it's dropping, and not because he's batting three fifty five. I think mm -hmm. he's he's is he leading the league in hitting? If not, he's got to be up there. And uh, 
He's got home runs. He's got RBIs. He, he's making great plays in short. But I will say one thing. I think three games were lost because he wasn't a third. And Lord knows we don't know about if there's more of plays that he could have made. But uh, not so much that he's playing a bad shortstop, because he's not, even though he made a big error last night. But uh, the guys who are playing third have been horrible. Not bad. I mean, Beckham is horrible. Is that a good word, Timmy? No, that's accurate. And, you know, Alvarez, he's never been known for a glove. And Danny Valencia, he's botched balls over there in the hot corner, too. So it's it's not pretty. When they come back, would you put Scope at third and put uh, Beckham back at second? I don't know. You, You might screw up every position on the team if you keep doing that. What they should do is put Manny back on third. All right, but they, Manny won't do it. And the other reason they don't want to move Manny back to third, and uh, my friend Bobby Jolson told me this last night, I think he's right, is that as a shortstop, he has more value. And they know they're going to trade him. All right, they know he's gone. He could be gone, he could be gone tonight. All right, Dodgers won 4 nothing last night. Had they lost two or three games in a row without Corey Seager, who's now out for the year. All right, Tommy John surgery, that could be two years, right or wrong. For a shortstop with Tommy John surgery? Yeah. I'm not even sure you're going to still be a shortstop. I don't know. I mean, that that's... How does a shortstop need Tommy John surgery? He tore up his elbow, however he did it. Yeah. Does it matter? Through so in high school? Yeah, he could have already like... been injured. A lot of these kids are already injured because they pitch in high school and they pitch a lot and then they play a position and... and that injury is still there. So his value is dropping because? Because they're only going to get him for four months. He's going to enter free agency no matter what, unless he went to L.A. and fell in love with it. But I don't even think he's going to do it then. He wants $35 million a year. And Scott, Scott Boris, right? Scott Boris is going to get it for him. It's that simple. And and no, I don't think the Dodgers are in position to pay him thirty five. Well, they probably are in position. If anybody is, the yeah, Dodgers they make and the that Yankees. much money in their parking lots. <laughs> Although, what a deal the guy uh, McCord made that he kept one of the parking lots. Did you know that? No, I didn't. When he sold the team, part of the deal was he kept one of the parking lots. So you're gonna, and I got to get to Mason here in a second. But you're gonna say that what's the best deal in sports? Was it St. Louis, the NBA owners, who got a share of the NBA for TV. 30 years? Correct. Or was it the guy who kept the parking lot for the Dodgers? Who makes more money in the end? Uh, only because of the times McCord might make more money. On a parking lot. On a parking Amazing. lot. Amazing. Mason, what do you have to say? Well, so I get the, I'm not a huge O's fan, but I get the notifications on my phone when somebody scores or the game's end. You don't get many, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and... It seems like every night, Tillman, one inning, seven earned runs. Next day, oh, they're down 12-2. to two, And, you know, I would turn them on if the game's close and it's getting towards the end. But there's just nothing to watch it anymore. Uh, I agree. And the return of Zach Britton, what does that mean? When's the last time we had a save opportunity? It's one more piece to trade. Yeah. You can be 8-24 and 24 without Machado and without Britton and That's without my a lot line. of people. You can lose without them. You're losing with them. So you look at Machado... And Adam Jones, they might keep because he's like the bull, he's like the heart of the franchise, but they might not. You keep Mancini, you keep Scope, you got Galsman, you got Bundy, you got Alex Cobb, all right, and you move on. All right, you just move. I right. think the team needs to be broken up because to sit there and watch eight and twenty-four, uh, the fans that show up, you say, well, why is the attendance down besides playing games in thirty-degree weather? Mm-hmm. Uh, They'll still be there. The Yankee you, game sold out. I mean, the national games are near sell out. Go ahead. But back in, it was 88 when they had the start, the horrific start. And right. when they came home off of those road trips, the Memorial Stadium was packed. I mean, it was a thing to go out there and root your team on. And then I guess the next year was the Fruit Loops year when uh, they picked up uh, number 20. The, the guy was the catcher. He was DH for us. And they almost, almost tied up the Blue Jays at the end of the year. So it could be next year. And back then they had Finley and Anderson and, and all these young kids, Devereaux, were coming up. And that's what's missing here is I don't see that influx of young talent. You can turn it around. And that was Mickey Tettleton was the Fruit Loops guy. 
I, I just don't see them flipping that switch, but I would like to see the city support this team, whether they're winning or losing. That was really cool. As bad as they were, they were packing Memorial Stadium. Yeah, it's uh, they did for a while. But in other words, what's going to happen in September? I mean, uh, they're 8-24 and now. Right now, I'd say they're heading to 100 losses. I'd be surprised. I, I, I'm a little concerned about getting to 60 wins. All right? What, where's it going to come from? I mean, from where? Who? I mean, how are they going to win? Well, you spend a lot of time out there. That's you don't know. I'm I there know. every game. And <laughs> yes, that is a problem right now. Yeah, I mean, it's like, how do you win? You know, and I think that Brock, <laughs> Brock is done as a closer. I think it's time for Darren Day to be the closer. Uh, Darren, I, I don't know how Givens can have an arm by the end of the year with as much as he's been pitching. And Castro the same way. You're wearing the bullpen out. Tillman goes one inning. Look. Castro went one in and gave up four runs. Game was over. I know we're close to the time limit, but if you look at the other teams that are losing 100 games a year, uh, I'll go back to the Nationals 40 miles away. Those draft picks that they got turned into gold for them. Absolute solid gold. You look, Kansas City went through that. They end up in the World Series. Houston had three years of wasteland, and they took those draft picks and they won. Do you think that the this management system with Duquette, and are they going to survive? Are, you, are these the guys you want having that two or three years of top draft picks? I'm not, I'm not knowledgeable enough, but Duquette's not going to be there. He's taking a lot of heat for this collapse. And uh, if you take a look at Buck's face, how much more is he going to take? You know, not because, you know, he's not doing anything to help, but can he do anything? Can you win with no talent? And he's done it. Buck has done it, but it ain't working this year. Well, the defense is the pitching's bad. And the defense is worse. The pitching hasn't been that bad, Wayne. It really hasn't been. You know, uh, but, but you I, look at a guy like Bundy. He's one in four. You know, his ERA is uh, uh, one point eight eight. One point eight eight. Then by lead the majors. If he had enough innings. Yeah, well, he's got enough innings. Just uh, I don't know, but he's been getting hit lately. It's 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 not a good scene, and uh, is Kashner a dry well? Is that is that Kashner? What the Kashner? Who, who pitched last night? Kashner. Yeah, with the beard. Right. Is is that? Is no, that I don't know. No, I think he's been kind of okay. Uh, uh, Galsman's been kind of okay. Tillman's been. Not only is it bad when you give up seven runs in one inning, you destroy the bullpen. Because if they left him in, they would have gotten 30 runs. It's not there anymore. They took a gamble. I can't, I'm not going to knock him. It failed. Give him his release, eat the $3 million and move on. Or put him in the bullpen for uh, long stints when we're getting blown out, which is becoming the, the, some of the nature. But uh, what was it the other day? It was 10 to 2. And Stan texted me at like 1.30 in the morning, are you watching? I said, watching what? He said those were making a comeback. I said it was ten to two in the eighth. Yeah. They got five runs. I don't know if they had a tie run up at bat or anything, but uh, I mean that's what you look forward to. I, look, I love the Orioles, and I'll continue to go. And people still have to continue to go. Well, I'm gonna. I will go. I'm, I look forward to going out there. I, I like having the corned beef sandwiches and the pastrami and all that stuff. But I'm actually starting to look forward to the major league draft. Yeah, and that's, well. I agree, but, you know, the Yankees will be fun to watch. All right, they always will be. With that, we'll head out to our second break. This is Coons Ford presents the Sports Maven. And before we head out, tell you about Science and Kirk. No one ever asked to be injured, Wayne. When this situation is thrust upon you or a member of your family, you have a right and duty to protect yourself and your family from financial harm. Science at Kirk will provide immediate assistance in getting medical care, securing lost wages, and advising on property damage and claim analysis. Call Science at Kirk's free injury hotline 24-7 1-800-LAWYERS. And, of course, Science at Kirk sponsors In the Nest. All right. How long have you known these guys, Bruce? Over 40 years. I've known Donald. My brother's known him for 60 years, you know? And I got to know Donald when I was about, I take that back. Donald took me to the Colt games 
uh, when I was about seven or eight years old. He would take me every week, and uh, so that's 60 years. Wow. I've known him for a long wow. time. Yeah. What a guy. What an attorney, too. As bright as they come. With that, we'll head out to break number two. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio. This is the Sports Maven Show. Presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, here's the Maven himself, Bruce Posner. All right. Wayne, you're on. I'm up. Hey, we're, we're up. up. Mason, you're up. Tell okay. me why the Caps are going to win tonight. Well, wait, I got another question sure. for you. Sure. I was watching the Caps game the other night. Right. And usually you call me and go, oh, they're going to win some other. And you didn't call me. You sent a text. And I texted and I called you and you said, I can't talk right now. Why couldn't you talk on Thursday night? Because for about the 50th time, I was seeing Jackson Brown. And uh, even though Mason doesn't know who, who he who is. Who is that? He doesn't know who he is. He has no idea. Jackson Brown sold out at the Lyric. Anybody who was there, and I know there's people listening who were there, he was absolutely, as usual, fantastic. Had a full band, had backup singers, mm-hmm. things he normally doesn't have. He's 70 years old, Wayne. 70 years old. So you got some video from that? We're going to put it up on website. You're going to do a montage for me. I got him singing Somebody's Baby, Wire to Wire. Mason, do you know any of these songs? I'm Googling them currently. All right. <laughs> you might know them? I might. I mean... He has so many look. songs that he did songs that he normally doesn't do, and I knew every one, every word. A uh, young guy about his age sitting next to me says, how do you do all these words? He said, it is, Why is a young guy my age even there? But his parents his made him go. Was there. No, his girlfriend was with him. I <laughs> Couldn't no, find a babysitter. When I say young guy, he might have been 30. <laughs> right. That reminds me of my father looking at a waitress who's 40 and going, the, the girl. I mean, the girl, it's a woman. He's like, ah, to me, it's a girl. It was uh, great. It was great. I saw Gary Stein there. Uh, so, saw so many people, and uh, it was dynamite. And, you know, there's like a cult of people who go to every Jackson Brown concert. So people I barely know come up to me, and I and I know them from being, says, I knew you'd be here, and it's the same people, and it was just great. I don't know what else to say. Okay, Let's well, the on. Caps on Thursday night were good but not great. And without Tom Wilson... Um, was it three game suspension too much in your opinion? Yes. Yes. That was Any a hockey game suspension play. was too much. It was hockey. He didn't jump at the guy. He's six four. I don't know about that. He didn't jump at the skates was, or was on the ice. Was it elbow that broke the jaw? It was his shoulder. It was his so, whole body. Like this? Like this? He, well, he didn't actually have to shrug up because he's taller than the guy. So he, to me, hit his shoulder and also then immediately hit his head. But I can't. Make up for the fact it's almost like one of those bang bang plays where the safety hits somebody and they just throw the flag because the safety hit a receiver. Sounds to me like a one game suspension, at most. It's a hockey play. No. It's hockey. He oh, broke I his know. jaw. He broke yeah. his jaw. Yeah, that guy broke his own jaw. Shouldn't he? he looked up? He saw Tom Wilson coming at him and he took him on. Now, if, if the smart man would have ducked out of the way, but it's this man decided after he looked up, he took two strides and they hit each other. And one guy was much smaller and lost. Mason, why am I wrong? Look, I just think you're wrong because of the way the league, any league at this point, views things, contact to the head. How is he going to... It was there. How is he not going to hit his head? That's not the question anymore. The actual rule is if you hit the guy in the head, you're going to get suspended. But it's not a rule. It is a rule. It It is not a rule. Bruce, hold on a second. It is a rule. Boo! (laughs) Boo! The league's picking the Penguins. Okay. All right. Am I not mistaken, or did you Jenny Malk and not play the first game? He didn't play the first couple and of who games. Who won the game, the first game? Pittsburgh. So if you lose a player that's important to you, why should that make you lose? I mean, you, that's oh, part it, of the game. It doesn't make you lose. It's the, part of the game, though. The Caps, Like if Maryland, if Connor oh, Kelly didn't play today and Maryland lost, I'm not going to say it's because he didn't play. Are you asking UMBC, me? Are you telling me? UMBC beat you, Albany without... Uh, Connor Fields. Yeah, but so it's an effect. It's, yeah, I mean, uh, Wilson UNBC does. He was missing two guys on attack. In other words, everybody misses guys. Orioles yeah, we, we have this Jonathan discussion. Scope. That's no excuse. Oh, not the Orioles again. Look, We've they had don't have an excuse anymore. Before. The Caps should be able to win, but at the moment, the Penguins added Malkin. They got Carl Haglin, who's a speedster winger back. They're, they're moving up. 
At the same time, the Caps lose the only big enforcer guy they have, and there's just no replacement for this guy. And, and I maybe they should have. It's a sort of the same question you ask about the Orioles, but to me, the Caps have about 22 guys who are NHL ready, and they've all played. When Wilson got hurt, they needed to bring up a guy who actually shouldn't be in there. He wears number 62, and he played all of five minutes. They just don't have one more NHL-ready player. So my main thing with Tom Wilson that I don't think a lot of people really get anymore that haven't seen the team is two years ago he was an enforcer. Now he's actually a good hockey player. But he can, man, that guy can hit. Oh, it, it, I, I think he's fantastic. So I also heard there was a horse race today. Anybody paying attention to that? Yeah, somewhat. But uh, I was watching last night. I was certainly before the race. I watched it extensively. The, the the gist I got from Jerry Bailey is today that uh, this might be one of the best derby fields ever. Because it's wide open? No, because the horses are so good. All right? And, uh, you know, the favorite is... Uh, we got Mendelssohn. You got who? Mendelssohn's the second or third favorite. Well, Audible is one of the favorites. Mendelssohn. And what's the name of the horse I like? I can't remember. Well, that, 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 brings up, that brings up Mason's point that one was on, the... Mace, who is it? One was the Kentucky Derby. Justify? Act- Ju- what's that? Justify. Justifier? Justify. Just justify, not justifier. Justify, right. <laughs> That's a TV show. Justify. It is? Okay, that's wonderful. So, when what year? What years in your mind was a derby a big deal? I, I used to think of it as almost a national holiday. I kind still of think thing. it's a big deal. That's it. Though. So do I. I still think it's a huge deal. You, Mace, you do. One hundred fifty thousand people there. It's something that you know we'll watch. I mean, I'll watch. I'm sure you'll watch. I watch the whole two minutes. Uh, the run up to the derby gets. What me. time is the derby today? Six thirty. So it's like six eighteen or some some oddball time. Tim's going to look that up for us in the background. Thank you, Tim. I'll be honest with you, I don't know enough to make a really brilliant prediction. I haven't but you, studied. You it. still have horses out there racing, right? No, I'm out of. The, I'm out. So worst so, business there is, worst business there ever was is being in the horse racing. Business. How long were you in the that post, business? Five years, six years. The yeah. toast for tonight is six forty-six, and coverage begins at noon, and then it starts <laughs> on NBC at two. All I know is TVG, the first four races, if you pick a horse and he doesn't win, he comes in second or third, you get your money back. I think Ethan passed out All on right. the other side of the table. All no, right. he's back. All right, you get you're up to a $10 bet, and then in the Derby, it's the same way. But the Derby, it's tough. 20 horses, it's the toughest Toughest fielder is toughest uh, horse race to bet because sometimes the best horse doesn't win because he gets jammed in the uh, in the right. Uh, kickoff. Go, right. So, so when right out of the gate. Yep. Reading about it, you get the whole oh this horse almost every horse in the field this time can win if they get good off the post. All right. So, so we'll, we'll see how that works. Uh, before we get to Bruce's late night NBA obsession. Uh, you did a piece for about an hour on Wednesday night that right. was one of the most well-received shows I think has ever been done by this whole, all of us. Right. And that was about uh, the big man, Dick Adele, passing away. You heard from his family later in the week. How did that go? Yeah, they called up and thanked me for doing the show, and they said that we really captured the essence of the of the big man, uh, Dick Adele, a, a true, I mean, to me, look, he's got a, a history in lacrosse that transcends just Maryland. He was a coach of University of Baltimore, then the coach of Army, then he came to Maryland, and he's the one who established the Maryland way, like like Tillman says, to play like a Terp. And Dick Adele is one of the most loved guys in lacrosse, one of the most respected guys in lacrosse. And Wayne, I think you saw me with him once, and when Dick Adele speaks, all you do is you listen. And his wealth of knowledge about lacrosse is incredible. And yeah, he loved Maryland to no end, but he loved every team. Every, Petra Mala was good friends with him. Uh, Scotty Marr from Albany was good friends with him. Uh, everybody was. This was a true legend of lacrosse and sports. And so much so, the family reached out and uh, really thanked me for doing the show. And I had on Pat McGinnis and Brian Reese, two players of his. I had Rob Schwartzman here, who was a close friend, and uh, John Tillman, who revered him. And we will get that up online. And we're going to have a Maryland Legends page coming out on Turp Talks. It's going to cover Lefty going to the Hall of Fame. It's going to cover the big man show, Mason. Well, to me, this meant that the guy that really started Maryland 
has left us now. And when you look at any great program, this guy is one of the most important into Maryland. You can obviously see why it meant a lot because he he's is. the guy that really started it. He is. And, well, it, it kind of goes back to Beardmore, but Dick Adele kind of like uh, way after Beardmore, he like changed the, the uh, whole program into a hard-hitting, blue-collar defensive thing. And Dick Adele, we loved you. We'll never forget you. And I think that's a great way to end the show today. This is Bruce Posner. The Viners are here. Check it out tonight. We'll have the show up. And we will see you Wednesday night on Turf Talk as we preview the NCAA tournament.